the Renaissance must have been a wonderful time to live in, if you were wealthy, of course. And to live in Florence at that time meant two things. The first one was that everybody knew who the Medicis were. And the second one, the streets were full of artists, architects, sculptors, in hopes that the Medicis would commission them an artwork. Indeed, the Medicis were great art enthusiasts, and they spent as much as they wanted in expensive masterpieces of any kind. Before we continue, please hit the like button, subscribe and give a like. I will appreciate that. Firstly, in painting, the spring was commissioned by Lorenzo the Magnificent to Botticelli. This was during the beginning of the Renaissance. Artists were leaving behind the tradition of the Middle Ages, where practically all artworks represented religious scenes. In this painting, Botticelli chose a mythological theme. We see Venus on the center. On the right side, there is Sephiro, the god of wind, chasing the nymph of chastity, Chloris. As Chloris is being possessed, she becomes Flora, who is collecting the flowers that are coming out of Chloris' mouth. It is thanks to Sephiro that the spring is possible, as he blows a breeze. Venus is depicted as a Madonna, a married woman with her hair up. Since she is the creative force and organizer of nature, she gets to be on the center of all. Just above Venus, we see Cupid shooting arrows towards the graces. These three women are almost nude, only dressed with transparent clothes. Their hair is arranged in an elaborate manner, since only unmarried women were allowed to wear it loose. They seem to be performing some kind of dance to welcome the spring. It can't be known for sure which grace is which. However, there are hypotheses. One of them suggests that the one on the left, due to her loathsome hair, is representing voluptuosity. Next will be chastity, as she shows a melancholic side and an introvert personality. And the one on the right will be beauty, as she is elegant. Lastly, on the far left, we locate Mercury, who plays the role of Earth-Sky connection. Yet, this means more to the commissioners than just beautiful art. If one looks closely, we could recognize a few faces from the banker family and close people. For starters, the grace on the right is Caterina Sforza. Meanwhile, the one on the center could be Lorenzo de Pier Francesco's wife, and he himself appears as Mercury. The last grace may be Simonetta Vespucci. In fact, Botticelli considers Simonetta as the stereotype of beauty. Therefore, we can see how these people had a special connection with art. Their power and money allowed them to be immortalized in an extraordinary masterpiece of one of the most famous painters of the Renaissance. On the matter of sculpture, Donatello owns the Medici a lot. He and Cosimo de Medici were good friends. In 1419, he commissioned a tomb for anti-pope John XXIII, which Donatello achieved successfully. Cosimo's friendship meant for Donatello more than just work. Since Florence considered homosexuality as illegal, Donatello would have been in prison had not been close to the Medici family. It seems that Donatello's revelry had no limit, for in 1434, Cosimo asked him to create a David symbolizing his triumph over his enemies. The result was as fascinating as scandalous at the time, a representation of a biblical figure with androgynous aspect as homoerotic. Certainly, nobody expected that, yet Cosimo placed it on the center of the courtyard of his palace. And lastly, in regards to architecture, it is thanks to the Medici that we can admire the amazing Cathedrale di Santa Maria del Fiore, better known as Il Duomo. Architect after architect, no one had been able to find out a way to build the enormous dome in decades. Only Filippo Brunelleschi could solve the problem. He proposed forgetting about the scaffolding, 
an idea that sounded crazy. The only ones who believed in him were the Medici. Actually, it came to be a win-win situation. On one hand, Brunelleschi's reputation went to the skies. On the other hand, the Medici family legitimized their power, proving the population they took the right decisions. Everybody won. These are just three examples of the legacy that the Medici family left. Not only did they were smart enough to become the most powerful family in Florence, but they invested their riches in incredible artworks. Without a doubt, we, art lovers of the modern age, own so much to the Medici family.